Hey everyone, welcome back to yet another video on operating systems. In this video, we will learn about semaphores in operating systems. So before learning about what is semaphore, I hope you would have seen all the all my previous videos on critical section and as well as about critical section problem. So uh, to recall, so critical section is nothing but that segment of the program code in which a process accesses and manipulates its shared data. And the critical section problem is nothing but is to design a protocol which can be used by cooperating processes in such a way that when one process is manipulating its shared data, no other process should be allowed to manipulate that shared data so that data inconsistency is avoided. Now in the previous videos, we saw that there are a lot of hardware and software solutions exists to this critical section problem. Hardware solution is provided with the help of locks and uh, software solution is provided uh, with the help of many different solutions. Out of that, we saw Peterson solution. So, and uh, we were also able to see that Peterson solution is able to achieve the critical section requirements like mutual exclusion, progress and bounded weighting. But there is one uh, disadvantage in Peterson solution, which is nothing but uh, it is uh, it can be used it's a two process solution so it can be used only for two processes but in a real operating system environment it is not restricted to two processes a lot of processes exist uh, in an operating system environment and uh, the operating system has to provide pro uh, has to provide process synchronization for more than two processes so that is the disadvantage of peterson solution and that is why we are not able to use it in an environment which involves more than two processes. So that's why we have another solution called as semaphores, which exists as a solution to the critical section problem. Now, what is this semaphore? Uh, the semaphore is basically a sophisticated synchronization tool, which serves to provide a solution to the critical section problem. So this is a more sophisticated definition. So if I have to tell you a layman definition, then what is the semaphore is nothing but the semaphore is nothing but an just it's simply an integer variable. So if you declare any integer variable, you can call it as a semaphore. Generally, we use yes, capital yes is used to denote a semaphore. So a semaphore yes is basically an integer variable, which can but the difference between any normal integer variable and this semaphore is that this semaphore can be accessed by can only be accessed by two indivisible atomic operations okay you have two operations here called as weight as well as the signal operation so this semaphore cannot be in spite of being an integer variable it cannot be accessed directly if you want to access or manipulate change the value of the semaphore variable uh, then it has to be done through one of the two operations namely weight operation and signal operation okay so basic definition of semaphore is it's an integer variable which can only be accessed by two uh, atomic operations namely weight operation and the signal operation now let us see in detail about what is the meaning of this weight operation and what is the meaning of this signal operation now before going into the definition of the weight operation as well as the signal operation consider any solution to the critical section problem consider the general format of any solution so see here consider the general format of any solution to the critical section problem any solution to the critical section problem the coding software based solution basically consists of three sections okay first is before entering into the critical section any process will execute a portion of code called as the entry section once that entry section part is completed then the process will enter the critical section and then after completing its execution in the critical section it will execute a portion of code called as the exit section now this is the general structure of any software based solution to the critical section problem you have an entry section you have a critical section and that is actually followed by a exit section okay so what we do in this uh, semaphore solution to the critical section problem is we have these two operations right weight and the signal the weight operation the weight portion of the code the weight operation is inserted in the entry section of the solution and the signal operation is inserted into the 
exit section of the solution okay the weight operation is usually uh, will usually occur in the entry section and the signal operation will usually occur in the exit section of this semaphore solution to the critical section problem now let us see in detail about what this weight operation will do and what this signal operation will do the signal operations say operation is straightforward whenever the signal operation is called it it increments the value of the semaphore by 1 okay and um, the definition of the weight operation is like weight operation is used to decrement the value of the semaphore but before decrementing the value of the semaphore the uh, there is a while loop here we have a checking criteria here okay this is like uh, this is like a trap set for the processes which want to enter the critical section so you have a while statement here which checks the value of the semaphore so if the value of the semaphore becomes uh, uh, is equal to 0 or less than 0 then the processes uh, it checks if the value of uh, yes is equal to or less than or less than 0 if this is true then the while loop becomes true and we have a null terminated while loop here which means it again goes on to check this condition it again keeps on checking the value of yes until this condition becomes false so unless the value of yes is greater than 0 Uh, the process which enters into this wait operation will never be able to come out of this while loop that's why whenever processes are busy executing this while portion of the code that set of processes are called busy waiting processes because they spend their time waiting for the critical section and executing this while loop in the entry section of the critical section problem code okay once this condition becomes false that process will come out of the while loop and then it will decrement the value of the semaphore by 1 it will decrement the value of the semaphore by 1 and then uh, it will start entering the critical section and executing and manipulating the code in the critical section now this is the basic uh, definition of your wait operation and your signal operation recall that what the wait operation will do wait operation will have a while loop which will check the value of the semaphore if the value of the semaphore is equal to 0 or less than 0 then uh, the while loop becomes true and it keeps on executing the while loop until the while loop condition becomes false once the while loop condition becomes false then it will decrement the value of the semaphore what will the signal operation do signal operation increments the value of the semaphore by 1 so basically wait operation will decrease the value of the semaphore by 1 and signal operation will increase the value of the semaphore by 1 now this is your uh, solution to the critical section problem i told you we will insert this wait portion of the code in the entry section and the signal operation will be inserted in the exit section of the code and that will be your solution to the critical section problem by using semaphores okay this is how semaphores are used to provide a solution to the critical section problem by using the wait and the signal operations now when that is inserted into the entry section and in the exit section of the code the code will look like this note that in the code i have written mutex instead of uh, um instead of semaphore i have written mutex mutex actually stands for mutual exclusion now mutex is an alternative term used to denote semaphore, semaphores which is used to indicate that uh, uh, mutex is again an alternative term used to indicate binary semaphores uh, which is just uh, indicating that uh, it's a lock that that provides mutual exclusion okay semaphores are considered as one form of locks which provides mutual exclusion that's why they are also called as mutex where mutex stands for mutual exclusion so this is your solution to the critical section problem this is the code for the solution to the critical section problem by using semaphores now let's see whether this code will be able to achieve mutual exclusion or not so what we are doing let's say you have three processes p0 p1 and p2 uh, all these uh, three processes wants to enter the critical section but p0 is the first process which wants to enter the critical section 
so what happens is the value of the semaphore is initialized to 1 and after the value of the semaphore is initialized to 1 process p0 executes the wait operation on the semaphore so what the wait operation will do wait operation will check if the value of the semaphore is less than or equal to 0 the value of the semaphore is not less than or equal to 0 it will become false and so so recall the code for the wait statement here wait operation here the value of the semaphore is initialized to 1 so here there is a while loop where it checks whether the value of the semaphore is equal to 0 or less than 0 that becomes false so what process p0 will do process p0 will decrement the value of the semaphore now the value of the semaphore becomes 0 and then it starts executing in the critical section now when process p0 is executing in the critical section let's say the next process p1 comes and it wants to enter the critical section if p1 is able to enter the critical section when p0 is already executing in the critical section then the semaphore solution is not satisfying the mutual exclusion requirement but let's see whether p1 is able to will be able to enter the entry section uh, will be able to enter the critical section or not so let's say p0 already enters the critical section and it has made the semaphore value as 0 initially semaphore value was 1 and then it checks for this condition it becomes false so p0 will make the semaphore value as 0 and then it starts executing in the critical section next process p1 comes when process p1 comes what it does is it again uh, uh, tries to execute the wait operation it checks the value of the semaphore note that the value of the semaphore has been made 0 by process p0 so here when p0 checks this while statement while yes is less than or equal to 0 it becomes true because the value of yes has been made 0 by process p0 so what happens is p1 is not able to come out of the while loop p1 gets stuck up in this while loop forever until the value of yes becomes greater than 0 okay so value of yes will become greater than 0 only when p0 executes the signal operation now the signal operation is there in the next to the critical section the signal the p0 will execute the signal operation only after executing the only after it finishes executing in the critical section portion of the code so after it finishes executing in the critical section portion of the code p0 will execute the signal operation on the semaphore so when p0 executes the signal operation on the semaphore the value of the semaphore becomes 1 okay so when the value of the semaphore becomes 1 p1 which was waiting for its entry to the critical section and which was stuck up in that infinite while loop it comes out of that while loop here so when the semaphore value becomes 1 this statement becomes false and so the entire while loop becomes false and so p1 is able to come out of this while loop and it executes the yes minus minus statement and it again makes the value of the semaphore as 0 and it is able to enter the critical section so with this solution to the critical section problem by using semaphores uh, we are able to ensure that when one process is executing in the critical section any other process is not allowed to enter the critical section it is never possible uh, for any other process to enter the critical section unless p0 finishes its execution in the critical section and executes the signal operation so from this example we are able to understand that uh, mutual exclusion requirement is satisfied by the semaphore solution recall that there are three requirements which has to be satisfied by any solution to the critical section problem number one being being mutual exclusion second one being progress and the third one being bounded weighting so this solution using semaphores pro provides satisfies the first requirement that is your mutual exclusion requirement to your critical section problem and uh, so next requirement is progress requirement what is this progress requirement progress requirement means that only those processes which are interested in entering the critical section should participate in the decision of which process should be allowed to enter the critical section next so here you can see that when p0 is executing in the critical section and after it finishes its execution in the critical section it just executes the signal operation 
P0 does not take any decision of who has to enter the critical section next. Operating system does not take the decision of who has to enter the critical section next. Only that that processes which are in, which are uh, interested in entering the critical section they will execute the wait operation right so if p1 is interested in uh, executing the critical section it will execute the wait operation if p2 is interested it will execute the wait operation so the interested processes themselves will comes and they will execute the wait operation on the semaphore to check whether they are allowed to execute on the critical section or not so from this, you, we are able to guarantee that this solution by using semaphores is able to achieve our second requirement also, which is nothing but your progress requirement. So, recall that mutual exclusion and progress are two mandatory requirements which has to be satisfied by any solution to the critical section problem and our semaphore solution is able to satisfy both of these two requirements. Now, what is our third requirement? Our third requirement is bounded waiting requirement. Bounded waiting requirement is nothing but uh, when one process is already executing, let's say process P0 is already executing in the critical section and process P1 request for access. But if process P0 finishes its execution in the critical section and once again it requests for entry to the critical section and uh, once again, P0 only gets back the access to the critical section and P1 is made to starve, then we will say that bounded waiting requirement is not met. Okay, so here uh, in this solution also, let's say if uh, coming back to our code, let's say if P0 is executing in the critical section and uh, uh, it finishes its execution in the critical section here, and then it executes the signal operation and makes the semaphore value as 1. Okay, let's say process P1, P2, P3 are all waiting for their entry into the critical section. And when P0 sets the value of semaphore to 1 and later P0 again comes and uh, ex tries to execute the wait operation and it makes the value of uh, uh, and it will not come into the while loop, it will um, make the value of semaphore yes it will decrement the value of the semaphore by using the wait operation. There is no guarantee that this will not happen. There is no guarantee that if P0 once after finishing its execution in the critical section, if it again requests for access to the critical section and it may be or may not be granted access. It is entirely dependent on the operating system state. And uh, there is no guarantee that uh, P0 will get its access to the critical section again and make the processes P1, P2 and P3 starve. So that we, do, we cannot guarantee that that will not happen. So we can say that this bounded waiting requirement is not met by this semaphore solution. Okay, so next coming back to the types of semaphores, there are basically two types of semaphores, namely counting semaphores and binary semaphores. Counting semaphores are those semaphores in their uh, integer values can range over an unrestricted domain. And the other type of semaphores is binary semaphores. So binary semaphores can have values only between 0 and 1 and they are also called as mutex locks because as I told you before they are basically locks which provide mutual exclusion that's why they are also called as mutex locks. So when binary semaphores exist what is the need for counting semaphores is that Counting semaphores are generally used to control access to a given resource which consists of a finite number of instances. Say for example, um, uh, let's say you have a printer resource. There are a finite number of instances of printer resource available. Let's say you have, you have three instances of the printer resource. So what will happen is the semaphore will be initialized to the number of uh, resources available. Okay, each process which wants access to the resource will perform a wait operation on the semaphore. What will happen when the wait operation is done? The semaphore will decrement the count of number of instances of the resource. Okay, when the process finishes and releases the resource, it performs a signal operation on the semaphore. So when it performs a signal operation, uh, the count of the resource it gets incremented. So when the count for the semaphore goes to zero, it means that all the resources have been used. 
so when the count for the semaphore reaches zero then any process which wants to use that resource will be blocked until the count becomes greater than zero so from this you can understand that this type of counting semaphores are used to grant access to resources based on the value of the semaphore we can identify whether the resources in resource instances are available or not and based on that you can grant the resource or you can block the process so how can we achieve uh, solutions to various process synchronization problems by using semaphores one example is that let's say you have two processes p1 and p2 and let's say process p1 has a statement called s1 and process p2 has a statement called s2 let's say they they both have have a common semaphore called a sync which is initialized to zero so let, uh, i want to ensure that the statement s2 of process p2 should not get executed before process p, p1 so how do i ensure this one way to ensure this is that what we do is we put the wait operation before the statement s2 okay so wait sync is the semaphore here we put the wait operation before the statement s2 and we put the signal operation after the statement s1 so what happens here is that the sync is already initialized to 0 so what the wait operation will do it will check whether the value of the semaphore is less than or equal to 0 so that is true here because the value of the semaphore is initialized to 0 here that is true so it gets stuck up in the while loop and so it will never come out of the while loop unless the value of the semaphore sync becomes uh under the value of the semaphore sync becomes uh, greater than 0 okay so we are able to ensure that statement s2 will never get executed until the value of sync becomes greater than 0 when will the value of the sync semaphore becomes greater than 0 after statement s1 gets executed we have put a signal operation here what will the signal operation do the signal operation will increment the value of the semaphore so with that we are able to ensure that the semaphore value gets incremented and so the process p2 will come out of the while loop here and then it will decrement the value of the semaphore and it will make it to zero again and then it will execute the statement s2 okay so by putting the wait operation before a statement s2 and by putting the signal operation after statement s1 we are able to ensure that statement s2 will get executed only after statement s1 so next is about the implementation of semaphores if you consider the implementation of semaphores one disadvantage which you usually get is called as busy waiting already while telling about the code i told you okay so here already i told you whenever uh, a process which wants to enter the critical section will execute the wait operation when it executes the wait operation what happens is it will execute a while loop in that while loop it will check whether the value of the semaphore is less than or equal to 0 if the value of the semaphore is less than or equal to 0 is true then the process uh, then the process which tries to enter its critical section will loop continuously in this entry code this is the entry code this entire wait operation will be the entry code which will be placed before the critical section so in case if the value of s less than or equal to 0 is true then the process loops continuously in this entry code okay and so the process is busy waiting for the critical section and so it wastes a lot of cpu cycles and uh, this type of processes are called busy waiting processes busy waiting processes are nothing but processes which are uh, trying to enter the critical section part of the code and so they are busy uh, busily executing the while statement and so since the while statement does not become false they are looping continuously in the entry section of the code so such types of processes are called busy waiting processes and uh, this type of busy waiting processes is pro is really a real problem in multi programming system because in a multi programming system you just have a single cpu which is shared among many processes so because of this busy waiting many cpu cycles are being wasted which could have been used productively for some other by some other processes 
okay because of this reason uh, this type of semaphores are also called as spin locks uh, the semaphores which actually make processes spins while waiting for the lock are called as spin locks okay so spin locks are nothing but semaphores which actually make the processes to spin while waiting for the lock are called as spin locks so this spin locks has some advantage to you uh, the advantage is uh, no context switch is uh, involved in a spin lock context which means that if you are if you employ some other type of locks there might be a context switch which will happen uh, during this uh, busy waiting cycles and because of this context switch what will happen is because of this context switch uh, it may actually result in a race condition but spin when you employ semaphores uh, the semaphores which be, which act like spin locks do not result in a context switch and so um, it doesn't result in any type of race conditions okay so in order to avoid so we saw about the disadvantage of the semaphore basic semaphore implementation the basic semaphore implementation is nothing but the wait operation will decrement the there will be a while loop which actually results in busy waiting processes this while loop is actually followed by decrementing the value of the semaphore in the wait operation in this in the signal operation we will increment the value of the semaphore okay this is your basic semaphore implementation uh, the disadvantage of this basic semaphore implementation is it actually results in busy waiting processes now what to uh, what how to avoid this busy waiting we need to have a semaphore implementation in which uh, there is no busy waiting processes we have to avoid processes busily waiting for the critical section and so wastage of cpu cycles have to be avoided so how to do that is this is one semaphore implementation which does not have any busy waiting so in this implementation what we are doing is so generally when the processor uh, when the process executes the wait operation and it finds that the semaphore value is not positive uh it usually waits and that waiting is called busy waiting so in this implementation instead of engaging in busy waiting the process will block itself okay instead of engaging in busy waiting the process will block itself what will happen when the process blocks itself is the blocked process will be put in a busy waiting will be put into a waiting queue associated with the semaphore for every semaphore there will be a queue associated with it so into the list of waiting processes this blocked process will be put and the state of the process will also be changed to waiting state okay then the control is transferred to the cpu scheduler and the cpu scheduler will select another process to execute so then what will happen to this blocked process is once a process is blocked waiting for a semaphore yes it has to be it can be restarted using a signal operation so the process which is restart uh, process can be restarted by um, signal operation by using the wake up operation so what the wake up operation will do is it will change the state of the process from the waiting state to the ready state and it will place the process in the ready queue okay so for that implementation this is how the semaphore implementation semaphore is implemented by using a c structure you can see that uh you have a variable called value which will store the integer value of the semaphore and then you have a structure uh which is used to which is used to store the list of processes so this is a waiting list of processes whenever a process has to wait on a semaphore it is added to the list of processes and a signal operation will remove one process from this list of processes and it will it's set to it's called awakening that process okay this is how uh, the implementation of wait operation and signal operation will look like generally how will the code for your wait operation will look like uh, there will be a while loop in your wait operation right in that while loop you will check whether the value of yes is less than or equal to 0 but here what you do is you first decrease the value of the semaphore and you check whether the value of the semaphore is less than 0 so if the value of the semaphore is less than 0 then that process is added to the list of waiting processes okay and then the process is blocked by issuing the block system call 
Now this block and the wake up, the block operation and the wake up operations are provided by the operating system as basic system calls. Okay. The next is the signal operation. In the signal operation, what it will do is it will increment the value of the semaphore. So after incrementing the value of the semaphore, it checks to see if the value of the semaphore is less than or equal to zero. Uh, let's say if the value of the semaphore has become uh, um, has become less than or equal to zero after incrementing, then it will remove that. Then that means that some process has been blocked because of that operation. So it will remove one process from the waiting list of processes and uh, it will wake up that process by issuing the wake up operation. Okay, uh, then so the problem which will occur because of the semaphore solution is deadlocks and starvation. So what do you mean by deadlocks is that uh, deadlock is usually a situation where, where two or more processes are waiting for an event which can be caused only by one of the other waiting processes. Say for example, how the semaphore solution will lead to a deadlock is, let's say you have two processes P0 and P1. P0 is executing the wait operation here uh, and you have two semaphores here, S yes and Q. They both are initialized to 1. And P0 executes wait operation on semaphore S. Yes. That means it is waiting for a signal operation on the semaphore S. Yes. Let's say the signal operation on the semaphore S yes has to be issued by process P1. And assume that process P1 issues the wait operation on the semaphore Q and it is waiting for a signal operation from process P0. So in this case, both the processes P0 and P1 are said to be deadlocked. P0 is waiting for the signal operation which can be done only by process P1 and P1 is waiting for a signal operation on the semaphore Q which can be done only by process P0 and so both of them are said to be deadlocked. So this type of situation is possible in this semaphore solution. The other type of situation is called as starvation or indefinite blocking. So when processes are deadlocked it can also lead to the starvation situation where so if you, uh, I told you um, whenever uh, the signal operation is issued, it will re remove a process from, it will remove one of the waiting processes from the waiting queue. Let's say the removal of processes from the waiting queue is done in LIFO order. LIFO is nothing but last in first out order. If the removal of processes from the waiting queue is done in last in first out order, it, there may be a chance that some of the processes may never get the chance to come out of the queue. And that actually results in indefinite blocking also called as starvation. Okay, that is all about the uh, problems which is encountered in semaphores. So in today's video, we saw that semaphore actually provides a sophisticated synchronization mechanism for uh, providing a solution to the critical section problem. And semaphore is basically an integer variable which has to be executed indivisibly or atomically only by two operations called as wait and signal operation. And the wait operation will decrement the value of the semaphore after executing a while loop and signal operation will increment the value of the semaphore by one. By inserting this wait and signal operations in appropriate portions of our critical section solution, we are able to achieve the requirements for our critical section problem and so semaphores acts as a classic solution to the uh, classic solution to the problem of critical sections. So that is all with this video. So until I meet you in the next video, uh, stay COVID negative, spread positivity, take care, bye-bye.